This time I will address several key questions regarding CBDCs and uh, their position in monetary policy, uh, given that uh, banks and regulators, in addition to technological aspects, are particularly interested in the financial nature of this type of uh, digital asset. Central bank digital currencies or uh, CBDCs come in two main types, uh, token-based and uh, account-based. So token-based CBDCs uh, work a lot like physical cash. So uh, you get digital tokens and you can give them directly to others without using banks in the middle. Uh, on the other hand, account-based uh, CBDCs are uh, more like regular bank accounts. Uh, so the central bank uh, keeps uh, records of each person managing each transaction electronically. Uh, so in these terms, token-based uh, CBDCs uh, give you more privacy and uh, they let you do transactions directly with others, uh, just like using cash. So each token stands for a certain amount of money and and uh, it can be given to others without the need uh, for having a bank account. Uh, of course, there's a lot of worry about uh, privacy and using them on a black market. So uh, this is why strong rules are needed here. Uh, while account-based CBDCs are easier to track and have more uh, rules to follow because uh, transactions are recorded in a central database uh, that is managed by the central bank. Uh, so people have digital accounts uh, with the central bank uh, or approved financial institutions, uh, which work smoothly. Uh, with regular banking system. Uh, of course, people might worry about their privacy uh, while using them, but uh, there should be a good protection for their data and transaction and only trusted institutions uh, should issue and uh, govern them. Uh, that's why uh, central banks are involved. The introduction of CBDCs has big effects on the world economy, uh, changing how international trade, uh, global finance and uh, monetary policies work. So uh, CBDCs can make cross-border payments easier by cutting down on costs, by uh, making settlements faster and by reducing fees for uh, changing currencies and uh, by letting people directly exchange uh, money between the digital currencies, CBDCs can help more people access uh, banking services and uh, boost uh, international trade investments. Uh, also, CBDCs might uh, change how much control countries actually have uh, over their money, uh, especially in the places where uh, one currency dominates the world. So uh, if CBDCs become widespread, they could in the end uh, make traditional currencies and uh, central banks and other financial in institutions a bit less important, uh, which could uh, change uh, who holds uh, economic power uh, globally uh, as, a key, as the ending result. So another thing is that CBDCs might shake up how stable the financial system is by changing how much money countries hold in their reserves, affecting how exchange rates are set and changing how uh, money moves around. So that's why central banks need to be careful introducing CBDCs to avoid risk and to uh, how stable money is, uh, how banking system work and uh, how uh, capital markets actually function. The idea of CBDCs uh, brings both new challenges as well as some opportunities for how central banks can manage money policies in the future. Uh, first of all, because they need to update their strategies to fit uh, the digital age. So CBDCs might change how central banks control interest rates. Uh, first of all, because they offer another safe way to handle money outside of regular banks. So. Uh, central banks might have to find new ways to control interest rates well in this world of uh, digital money. Uh, also, CBDCs can change how much money is around by changing how much is being kept in the system of a central bank. And uh, this affects how well money moves around. So actually central banks need to watch this and uh, change what they do uh, to keep things uh, steady and uh, working well. And besides that, uh, CBDCs could shake up how exchange rates work, uh, first of all, by changing how much people want uh, different currencies and uh, how money moves between countries so that the central banks must uh, have 
or might have to rethink how they manage uh, exchange rates to keep things uh, steady and make sure that their currency stays uh, strong when uh, CBDCs uh, become omnipresent. Uh, since CBDCs are something new to the banking systems, they also bring new problems as well as new changes for keeping prices steady, uh, which means that central banks have to change how they handle money uh, to fit the digital world. So CBDCs can change how much stuff costs by changing how much money uh, is around, uh, uh, how fast it moves and uh, what people think uh, prices will do. So. In those terms, central banks need to have clear goals for keeping prices steady uh, and change what they do to reach uh, and keep those goals. Uh, also, uh, CBDCs might uh, change prices by changing what people want to buy, uh, how they spend their digital assets and how much they save. So central banks need to watch closely how people use CBDCs and how it affects what they buy, what they save and in where they invest to understand what it means for prices. And also CBDCs can impact prices by changing uh, how much it costs to make things, uh, how they're made and how many companies are competing. And uh, that's why there should be a closer look at CBDCs change, how things are made and sold, uh, including new technologies, how efficient they are and uh, how companies actually compete using uh, all these digital assets to see uh, how it could affect prices. So these are the topics I cover in uh, more details in my CBDC course uh, as a part of the From Bits to Banks uh, digital program. So to find out more, follow Fintech Online Center.